Here's the problem with cause and effect, is it ends up that we just reason in a circle when we try to prove why we should be able to rely on it. We know that cause and effect is not a relation of ideas, so it's not necessarily trustworthy, it's not necessarily true, it's not necessarily reliable. So we need to have good working experience to rely on to prove why we should rely on it. So why should I trust cause and effect to work? It's a matter of fact, right? It's always worked in the past. But now we need to have another reason to rely on this inference, right? Why should I trust what's always, what's always worked in the past? Well, the only reason I can give, the only reason Hume thinks we can give, is that what's always worked in the past has always worked in the past. This ends up circular, so we get in trouble. So what should we do on Hume's basis, right? Now we have no good reason to rely on cause and effect relationships, and we think those are kind of important, right? Hume's not going to abandon us, right? He says he thinks he has a skeptical solution. So not a perfect solution, remember what skepticism is. A skeptical solution to these doubts. But we definitely can't trust cause and effect to guarantee anything. Instead, he's going to say cause and effect is just what he calls constant conjunction. So stuff tends to stick together, right? When one billiard ball goes rolling down a table and hits another, it tends to be true. In fact, it's, it's pretty much always true that the other billiard, billiard ball moves too. But it's not necessarily true. Here's what Hume says. Don't let my scary philosophy get in the way of your everyday life. This is a principle that, he, that he, he really commits to. He says, if my philosophy would ruin your life, don't listen. But he thinks that there's a way that you can still listen, you can still do philosophy, and you can be okay. He's going to offer us his skeptical solution. So we can live our lives, he says, without proving that cause and effect works. Here's how. He says, even if we know perfectly well that we can't prove cause and effect, we still can't help but act like it. Right, so imagine this. If I, if, if I or someone else throws a baseball at, right at your head right now, going really fast, right, even if I just proved to you that, that you can't rely on cause and effect, you're still going to duck, right? Even if, it's, even if it's possible that the baseball wouldn't hurt, even if it's possible that there is no baseball, if it's possible that the baseball would explode in midair, right, all of these possible cause and effect relationships could be the case, but you're still going to duck, right? You still can't help but think cause and effect is the case. And why not? Because of what Hume calls custom and habit. Think about it. We're really used to seeing cause and effect work. It's worked every time in the past, right? So we get accustomed to it. Human nature just says, look, when we see things happen a lot of, a lot of the time in the past, we're going to get used to it. We're going to expect it to happen in the future. And, he, and Hume says this can be a good guide to human life. In fact, without custom and habit, we wouldn't be able to live our lives because we would do philosophy like Hume does or like Berkeley does or like Locke does, and we'd come to a puzzle and we'd just be, we'd be befuddled, right? I would say, whoa, wait, there's no cause and effect. Now I can't do anything, right? I have no reason to uh, make dinner tonight because I don't know whether that dinner will be nourishing. I have no reason to get in my car because I don't know if when I push down the pedal anything's going to happen, right? Hume says, look, this is crazy. Obviously, I, should, I sh both should and have to still live my life like everything works fine, right? So custom lets us treat things as if caused, as if cause and effect works, and it does a pretty good job, right? We, we haven't all died terrible deaths because cause and effect has failed us. Custom has worked us just fine. So how do we judge uncertain knowledge? Well, remember, we need to trace it back all the way to its original source. And sometimes it's going to end up that the original source isn't all that trustworthy. But when in these kinds of cases, we can still probably rely on custom and habit. Here's what he wants to say about now belief in fiction. So he wants to say, here's how we can tell the difference. What do we do when we, we think there might be something that we're not sure about, right? I run into a belief, and, and do I trust it? Is it just made up? I don't know. Well, our minds and our human nature inclines us to think cause and effect must be actually true. But we know that our beliefs, our minds, our, our human nature can also cause us to make up things that are just crazy, right? Or just things that are, that are purely false, right? We've made up unicorns, we've made up Bigfoot, we've made up dragons, lots of things like that. So how do we distinguish good belief from fiction? How do we know when I actually believe something versus whether I'm just sort of entertaining the thought about it? Hume says there's a, there's a special sentiment that we have about ideas, and it's called belief. And we'll talk about belief and how to differentiate it from fiction in our next and final video for the week.